living from it. His father never here. I never played poker with the whole group here. Well, we don't have your bankroll, baby. Come on. For those who don't speak Chow, he was talking about how much he enjoys playing with this group of strangers. I'll play poker with you every day of the week if you want. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's too good for me. <laughs> Actually, Chow's now figuring out how much money he can make off this group. <laughs> Probably so. It's fun though. To me, oh yeah, because I play with the professional all the time. You play with the same people all the yeah, time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Now I play like this, like I think I enjoy it more. It would be fun to lose my money to Chow. He's just among the best in a lot of ways. He seems very relaxed at this featured table. He mentioned playing with pros. He does that in the biggest cash game in the world, and that game includes this guy Barry Greenstein. And Barry's collecting some chips out there. Barry, Player of the Year runner-up to Eric Lindgren. These guys are waiting for the best hand to beat me. I don't really like that. If Chow or Barry sits down next to you in a cash game, just save some time and hand over your cash. Barry has been a bit short stacked throughout this tournament, but he's hanging in there at another table, another big game player, Patrick Antonius, all in with his pocket jacks. He leads the pocket eights of Dustin Dirksen. There's a pair of sixes on the board as we go to the river. And the river card is another six, and so with a better full house, Patrick Antonius doubles up. Patrick, once mentored by Marcel Luce, still without a bracelet, but he's only 27, and he has a load of talent. Also playing here is his fiance Maya Geller. He's put out a bet at another table. And it looks like Maya's going to collect that pot. Patrick and Maya are so good-looking, if I'm in the same restaurant with them, they throw me out. <laughs> you know, they edge Marco Traniello and Jen Harmon as best-looking poker couple. Chad Brown and Vanessa Russo, Phil Locke and Jen Tilly, and Chip and Karina Jet also in the running. Me and anybody I'm with finish 237th. Guess that doesn't bode well for me. There is Vanessa Russo sitting this hand out, but Blair Hinkle's involved in a pot. He's got King-10 against two other players. Ron Signy has ace-deuce and Ben Asar with King-queen. Blair part of a great poker couple. He and brother Grant, the first siblings to win bracelets in the same year. The flop is five, tray eight. That misses everyone. Signy with ace high and a wheel draw leads. And he checks. Hinkle's going to try to buy it with 2,500. I raise. Asar raise. says raise. A bigger bluff. One orange chip, 5,000. Yeah, Asar trying to out bluff Blair's bluff. Signy folds. I believe you. And Hinkle folds. They're really good, right? No, I didn't have it. Oh, oh, that's mean. <laughs> Sar shows the bluff. Nice raise. That wasn't mean. He just had better nothing than you had. So nicely done by Asar. A good raid and good timing, and he fools the bracelet winner. All right, we cross over the Milwaukee's Best Light No Limit Lounge to the feature table where top pro Chow Zhang has been frustrating the rest of the table. Come on, I need a hand here. Go on. No queens. Queen. No queens. It's my favorite card today. Queens have been good to Chow so far. Action starts on Garth Paul, Ace King, offsuit. Paul's going to raise it up to 2125. What's with 2125? Why not 2100? Will someone explain that to me? Hannah Elizabeth with pocket jacks. <coughs> Hannah is Brace going to repop it to 7100. That's a mistake. She should have made it 7175. <laughs> Chow Zhang now with 8-7. He's thinking about whether he paid the gardener this week. Chow, don't even think about it. I don't even want you to... I, if, I, if I even see you reach for a chip, I'm, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> you promise? You're leaving? I might. You don't want me out this early. Come on. <laughs> Chow don't reaches. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Muck. Okay. Thank you. I like a man who follows direction. <laughs> Just tell me what you want me to do, Hannah. <laughs> Action on Paul now. And he oh re-raises enough to put Hannah Elizabeth oh, all in. She's got just under 22,000. You're not trying to bully me because I'm a girl, are you? Paul's mother taught him not to wow. talk to strange women. <laughs> it was nice playing with you all. She makes the call, and she'll be at risk. Pocket Jacks against Ace King. Okay. Two classic starting hands clashing here. I can't watch. I can't. I'm going to be nauseous. Hannah oh, Elizabeth all in. And there's a king oh, in the flop. That. And that's a big blow to Elizabeth. Yeah, she's not nauseous. She's sick. Bad flop for Hannah. Jack. It's a four of no. diamonds on the turn. No help. No. Hannah has to see a jack. Don't do it. River card. 
is a five, and that will end Hannah Elizabeth's main event. Good luck, guys. Chow loses his new friend. She was trouble, Chow. Uh, thanks, honey. Good luck. Congratulations, honey. Good luck. So Hannah Elizabeth will hit the rail, and the game won't be quite as much fun for Chow Zhang anymore. What can you do? 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Welcome back to the Rio on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker. You see nearly 7,000 began the main event. Over 3,600 survived day one, and today's field is the smaller of the two day two sessions. At an outer table, 2002 main event champ Robert Varconi has called the all-in of Steve Mondry. Varconi shows pocket kings, Mondry ace jack. Come on, ace. Come on, ace. Andre looking for an ace. Ace does come there, but so does another king. Barconi with a set. Five on the turn means Mondry is drawing dead. Barconi ends up with a full house, and he knocks off Steve Mondry. Had to be a world champion. Nice answer. Robert Barconi, very nice man, no ego. These days, says he just lives a boring suburban life in New York with his wife, Olga, and two daughters. Over to another New Yorker and a main event runner-up, Eric Seidel, who's collecting a pot. Seidel famously second to Johnny Chan at the 88 main event. At another table, a young New Yorker, first-time bracelet winner, Jason Young, playing at a table with Scotty Wynn. The end of the day, me and you drink Dom Perignon. Sounds good to me, man. I think Scotty Wynn roomed with Dom Perignon several years ago. <laughs> All right, elsewhere, another New Yorker, Ray Romano, Emmy winner, had quite a day one, and picking up where he left off, collecting more chips. I went online, Lon, and checked out Ray Romano's tournament results. Man, he stinks at poker. He can't play. <laughs> Ray Romano enjoying the life these days when he's not playing poker. He's playing a lot of golf. Doesn't get any better than that. To table two, where we find Blair Hinkle and Vanessa Russo, who have made small pre-flop investments. Hinkle with Ace Jack, Russo with pocket trays. Also on the hand is Martin Alkir with a suited queen ten. Three to the flop. It is nine ace deuce. Hinkle pairs his ace. Alkir with a flush draw. Rousseau left with her trays, checks. Alkir bets 5,000 on the draw. Alkir saw Gus Hansen playing on TV a few years ago, and that got him started. Hinkle makes the call. Russo now gives up her trays, so heads up to the turn. Turn is an eight. Blair Hinkle still with the advantage. Alkir from Denmark picked up a gut shot straight draw. He bets 11,000. Trying to bluff a Hinkle? You don't bluff a Hinkle. Their mom didn't raise them to be bluffed out of pots. He does make the call. River cards a four that missed Al Kier. A check mark for Hinkle. Uh huh. Ma Hinkle's boy has the check mark. They both check. Ma Hinkle's boy's got the pot. Al Kier folds even without showing. He knows he's beat. Hinkle turns over his winning aces. He's a Hinkle. All the Hinkles are hellaciously tough. <laughs> Blair hoping to make some more World Series of Poker history. It's a journey that began thanks to his older brother. Grant is six years older than me, so he's always like bigger and stronger and better at sports, and I always looked up to him. I definitely think I was a role model. He looked to see what I did first. Whatever haircut I had, he had the same haircut, and I made some horrible haircut decisions. He did it, so I did it, and that's just the way it went. For a couple days, there were bragging rights because I had the bracelet and he didn't. I was like, all right, my turn. Winning the same year is just ridiculous. Like, how do we actually get that lucky? To make it through those huge fields and both take it down is just unbelievable experience. He wins first, and then I win second. As long as that keeps going, I'll be happy. 